May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Whether you are online, wherever uh, this moment finds you, a welcome to you in our worshiping community and all of us who are gathered here today. We continue to be in this season of Easter, a reminder to us that resurrection is not a one day, it is a way of life for the here and now. And we trust in how God's spirit is moving among us for that message of resurrection to come to you personally and to us as a community. And uh, over these last weeks, May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and we are just so grateful today that Vicki Elliott, the Executive Director of Mental Health Connect, is here with us. Vicki is going to be talking during our service um, about the work that they are called to do. And um, the last few weeks in our faith talks and our conversations about what it means to be healthy in body, mind, and spirit, and how we can be a community who asks questions, who is there for each other, that speaks into what we need. And so, uh, Vicki, thank you for your presence today. We are so very grateful. And um, just know today that just being here makes a difference however you are here worshiping, and we always trust in that, and we gather together. So as I walk to the font, we name this Thanksgiving, this promise that comes to us, God's love through Jesus and the Holy Spirit in our baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, saves, and sends us with love that lives forever. Amen. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We give thanks for the mercy and forgiveness that wrap our true selves in sacred belonging and purpose. Thanks be to God, alleluia, for a word at the dawn of creation which spoke water and life into being. Thanks be to God, alleluia, for the great flood that revealed nature's power and God's commitment to life after death. Thanks be to God, Alleluia. For the river that carried Moses safely, building a bridge between mothers and nations. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. For the rock split open in the desert, spilling water for those thirsting for freedom. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. For the one who turned water to wine and met a woman at the well with living water. Thanks be to God. Alleluia for the gift of holy baptism, which declares there are no more God-forsaken places and nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus, for Christ is risen. risen God of life, we rejoice with the waters that cover creation. Our songs of praise echo their dancing tides and streams. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this community and all of creation. Cleanse our fear, drown our divisions. Give us mercy and grace to drink so that our whole lives are signs of death defeated and thirst quenched. Thanks be to the risen Jesus, the Son of God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and we sing together. We 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. to all. 
pray together. Gracious God, through the work of your spirit, you push us into wider and wider circles of belonging. Open our hearts and minds to the gift of belonging to you and one another, the gift you make available to all. Amen. You may be seated. This morning is taken from Acts chapter 11. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. And as I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you are and your entire household will be saved. Here ends the reading. Good morning. It was the fall of 1990, and I was a college sophomore who decided with no particular experience or athletic ability to go out for women's cross country. As a side note, this was Division Three of the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, so all comers were welcome. I'll never forget my first junior varsity cross country race. It was a 5K. I was ridiculously unprepared. And for whatever reason, nerves or adrenaline, I started sprinting when the gun went off. <laughs> sprinting and 5Ks don't go together. I would soon learn. Would you guess that for the first 100 yards or so of the race, I was in the lead? until things got really painful. And then one by one, a steady stream of 10, 20, 30, maybe even more runners passed me by. I had committed one of the cardinal sins of running, going out way too fast. And then I committed another. I looked back to see who was still behind me. And do you know what I saw? It was a golf cart. Yep, it was the golf cart that follows the last runner. In the distance, I could barely see the back of the last woman who had passed me by. She was a dot on the horizon. But now I had this golf cart hot on my tail, and I turned around and I screamed, will you just slow down? <laughs> And 
we often talk about learning to follow the learning to follow the holy spirit or looking to where she leads but i wonder if the spirit isn't sometimes like a harassing golf cart that presses in on us from the rear pushing us out ahead when we would rather give up or slow down or duck out when no one is looking I see the push of the Spirit in our text from the book of Acts today. I see the push of the Spirit in the way these new believers in Jesus who were primarily Jews are moved to cross boundaries, pushed into wider and wider circles of belonging. This push begins at Pentecost at the very beginning of Acts, when Jews from all lands and all tongues are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the push outward continues when Peter and John lay hands on the Samaritans who also received the Holy Spirit. And in our story today, we learn of another widening of the circle that the gift of the Holy Spirit that leads to new life in Christ has been given to the Gentiles, too. Can you imagine that earliest group of believers and Jesus turning back and screaming, will you just slow down, God? The distinction between circumcised and uncircumcised believers in Jesus might seem trivial to us today, but purity laws were foundational to how the Israelites identified themselves as a people set apart to serve and honor God. These were not trivial legalisms, but sacred practices and acts of trust between God and God's people. And so what a difficult and painful position Peter is in as a circumcised believer as he tries to defend this ever-widening circle of God's grace to his own back in Jerusalem. And what does he have to offer to those who criticize him? He has but a testimony of his experience. He shares his story of strange visions from God and stranger events taking place in a Gentile's home, a place in which he, as a Jew, was not even supposed to share a table. Peter had no facts or figures or powers of persuasion on his side. His arguments were thin, and his storytelling required the wildest of imaginations. But when Peter was done sharing his story, when his mic dropped and the room went completely silent, it was the spirit who pressed into the moment, suddenly revealing to those present the link between the word of God that they knew, which was the Torah, and the new word in Jesus that was now coming into being. It was not the act of the Apostle Peter, but the act of the Spirit that pressed upon them a new understanding that they all, whether circumcised or uncircumcised, belong to God, that they belonged to one another. So while this is a story about Peter, this isn't a story about what Peter did. Peter was not the agent of God's grace. Peter was a witness to what the Spirit was moving forward in his midst. And the Spirit really had to push to get Peter's attention. The heavens had to open. Creatures of all kinds had to descend from the sky. God had to bellow out at him not one, not two, but three times. Finally, the Holy Spirit had to fall upon the Gentiles just for Peter to begin to piece together all that was happening. Peter didn't micromanage this radical transformation of community in the early church because it was done. Grace and forgiveness, life and belonging for all was what God did in Jesus Christ, and that was already done. 
and the circumcised and the uncircumcised believers of the day, you and I, the rest of the world, we the church and we in society are the ones who construct and maintain artificial boundaries between people based on race and culture and ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation and identity. It is us who struggle to keep up with the new word. What do you think would have happened had Peter refused to tell the others about the vision he had seen? One wise member of my weekly Bible study asked, would the Spirit have found another way to bring the good news to the Gentiles? Most of us agreed yes. Try as we might, we can't keep pace with all that God is doing in the world. Sometimes we think we can make out the Spirit moving ahead on the horizon, but sometimes we, like Peter, need a giant push from a golf cart coming in from the rear. The transformation into beloved community is far from complete, at least here on earth. So when we grow weary of conversations of welcome and inclusion, may we remember that we proclaim a God who drops in from heaven and breaks all the rules about who is in and who is out. And when we don't know how to take the next step, may we share our stories and experiences like Peter did and invite the Spirit in. And when we fear difference and the unknown, may we bear witness to a God who is still speaking a new word among us. Praise be to our God who tries and tries again to break in and to press into our hearts that we all belong to God and to one another. Amen. Please stand as we sing. Our vision here at Mount Olivet is to be a community partnering with God in the world. And so when we are living out our mission and when we trust um, God's Holy Spirit, um, as Pastor Kristen said, that is moving behind us, pushing us ahead, it's pushed us 
um, to find partners in the community who are doing God's work and we're called to join them. And so it is with great thanks that I welcome Vicki Elliott, Executive Director of Mental Health Connect, to share more about their vision and mission and our connection together. Thank you, Vicki, for being here. Thank you, good morning. I have often felt, I haven't pictured a golf cart, but I often feel like almost somebody pushing me, like that golf cart bumping up against me maybe even, very aggressively. So I like the, uh, the image of the golf cart. Thank you for that this morning. Well, thank you for being here. Um, of course, uh, learning about mental health and recovery and how we can reduce stigma is so important as we partner together. May is Mental Health Month, so I'm honored to be here with you today. Over the past two years, mental health has received some attention in the news. It's been on social media, and it's actually affected our lives personally as well. With one out of every five Americans experiencing a diagnosed mental illness, and half of us struggling with our mental health over the past two years. It's no, uh, it's no surprise that we all have some experience with mental health. Well, after all, we are all human beings. So we have bodies and we have minds, and it needs care. Mental Health Connect is a collaborative, nonprofit organization that partners with over 33 faith communities throughout the Twin Cities, including Mount Olivet. We help people, faith communities, and our larger community better understand mental health and recovery. What does anxiety look like? How do I know if it's time for me to get some help? What do you do if you have depression or you feel hopelessness? How can I help someone that I care about get into treatment? Where is there a counselor that takes my insurance? <clears throat> I am passionate about this work after my own personal experience. I lost my oldest son when he was just 24 years old to mental illness and substance use related complications just four years ago this week. The challenges of finding help and the confusion about where to turn made this difficult situation even harder. There are a lot of people out there like my son, like our family, in our churches, and in our neighborhoods. Here's how Mental Health Connect partners and supports and works. First of all, we provide relevant training and outreach in the community, working to reduce stigma, share our stories, and educate people about mental health and wellness. Second, we collaborate with over 33 churches in the Twin Cities, providing monthly education and training, providing tools and resources so that churches can be safe places for all of us to go to find help. And third, we have a warm line. It's called our navigation line. You can text, email, or call us, and our experienced caring navigators will answer the phone and listen. They have resources and they understand the system. They'll help you find your next good step. It's free, confidential, and available Monday through Friday for anyone that wants help and resources. The mental health care system is so confusing. If you have a physical issue, for instance, if you fell off your bike or you slipped or you got sick, you know exactly what to do, right? Number one, You'll evaluate yourself, and if you can wait, you're gonna make an appointment with your doctor. If you have a lot of pain, if things don't seem quite right, you're probably gonna to go to the emergency room. We have a really clear path with our physical health. Now let's say you're concerned about your mental health. What would you do? What's your first step or your second step? How do you know where to turn? It's not that easy. Mental Health Connect is the only organization of its kind collaborating with our faith communities and providing this much needed service of navigation for you. Your church leaders and your community, 
And it's free and it's 100% supported through faith community partners like Mount Olivet. Thank you. If you'd like to know more about Mental Health Connect, how you can volunteer with us or to find help, I'll be here this morning out in the Welcome Center. Please stop by and ask a question or just say hi or share a story. Thank you so much. A continuation of sharing our stories and being real about this life, we now uh, share peace together um, by noting and acknowledging um, who is here today, both online. If you're online, please type peace in the comments and we'll connect with you that way on Facebook. If you're here in person in just a moment, um, to extend our peace that you are seen and known and loved and we are here as a community. And we also offer our gifts not only financially, but I think Vicki reminds us we have stories uh, to share with each other and that link of being vulnerable when we're able to do that really brings forth community. So for all the ways that you support Mount Olivet's mission and vision, but also support each other as a community by offering what God has already given you for the sake of someone else. We do that now. The basket up front is for um, anyone to put their offering in. Kids, your coins and your dollars uh, go to feed hungry people. And now may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive peace from those who are here and also online.
wonderful choir heads back to their seats. This is their last Sunday of the program year to be with us. And can we just acknowledge the great giftedness of this choir? And Blake and Angela for your leadership among us as well. Thank you for your offering choir. And now we respond to the gifts uh, that we give and are giving. God of the resurrection, we give these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith. We give these offerings in hope. You can use them to spread your love. With these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and open hands. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Wherever we are today with the Spirit among us, we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You all have a place. This is God's meal, and um, it is enough for each of us and for all of us, wherever you are in your faith journey. If you've been here a long time or just visiting for the first time, you are welcome to this meal of God's grace. And whether you're first in line seeing nothing but the future ahead or in the back looking around and seeing that golf cart pushing you forward, um, here is the promise of God. There's an urgency to get this message of love and grace and mercy to all people, and God chooses us to do that. But along the way, when it feels too much or we need that push, God offers us this dailiness of this grace made known through regular things like a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine. And so open your hearts today and your hands to receive this grace as we make our way. 
For those who are online, hear this promise. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For us here at church, the wafer is gluten-free, wine is red, and grape juice is light in color. After you receive the meal, you're invited into a time of prayer where you are, or feel free to come up and use the kneelers as well. Please come forward now. The feast is prepared.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Here at Mount Olivet, our prayers are shared together and offered at the end of our service. Um, as we have heard God's word, as we have been forgiven and fed, it is now in body, mind, and spirit that we name those places where we are calling God to be. And when we do that, we follow along with people. We trust where the Holy Spirit is leading, and it could by chance be that you have something to offer. Someone here online or in person as they make their journeys of either joy or um, places um, that we need healing, places where we need our eyes and hearts open to God's inclusive love in the world. And so I'll start us off. If you're online, I just invite you to type now with uh, wonderful technology. Sometimes there are delays. And as you type, those will um, rise up in my feed. And once we've prayed here at church, we will speak your prayers as well as our united community. So let's pray. God, for these stories, um, what is life now that Jesus has uh, risen in heaven, how do we make our way? And for today, for Peter to have the guts to tell the oddity of his dream, of what your spirit is about, because there's something there that is sticky, that is getting to people who so much need to hear about your love. And it's not so much about doing things the same way, God, as it is about joining together and forming community to trust in the dailiness of your spirit, uh, to cleanse us, to remind us, to open ourselves uh, to what this world can be and should be, and for love to find us in that place. Hear us now, the prayers of your community. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today for those of you here at church? Yeah, Bob. Oh, Bob and Mary Jane, yay! Okay, five zero, five zero. You've been married 50 years, um, half a century. Um, however you want to articulate, we celebrate that, Bob and Mary Jane, um, your impact on our community, on your family, in this world. Um, and I don't think you're done yet. And so um, for that deep sense of love, and uh, what that means uh, for you in the celebrating, we join you and give thanks for your love, your commitment to each other, uh, those marriage vows you made so many years ago um, that have ebbed and flowed and continue to guide your way with God's love. God in your mercy. Yeah, Barb. Oh. Yeah, so Barb and Roy, Roy Heinrich, their son Mark is moving to Stillwater from Iowa, so three hours closer for that transition in his life, for you um, to have that proximity uh, to your son and his family, um, for them to find community in Stillwater, uh, for all those things, those pieces that are coming together. Um, God, we're grateful. God, in your mercy. Kurt, I am going to speak a prayer. I would like all of us to look here. If you're online, Kurt Holt, Holt is here at church. After five months, two falls, a heart surgery, and you are here, all in, and I saw the twinkle in your eyes today, and we've been praying for you, Kurt, um, just for your body, mind, and spirit, um, and for your daughter, Anne, and son-in-law, George, and all the love that's been surrounding you and the place where you live. Um, may you just rest in God's healing and your continued recovery, 
It is just a joy to be with you in community again, and we give thanks for that. God, in your mercy. Other prayers here today and online. Jan, uh, dear Jan, um, you have been walking the hospice journey uh, for your mom for a long time, coming close and being caregiver. And uh, for your mom's death this last Thursday and um, how that changes your life uh, for God's love that has held your mom um, as she has made her way in sickness and in health and now in heaven. And Jan, uh, for this new vocation now, um, your life is different. Your time um, will be in different places, but for you to hear the promise that if nothing can separate us from God's love, then nothing can separate us from your mom's love. And may that love come to you each and every day as you remember the impact of that relationship with you. And for all your family, uh, we pray for you, Jan, and for your healing each and every day. God, in your mercy. Karen Anderson prayers uh, for the Sellers family whose son Marcus died from mental illness and addiction three years ago on this weekend. Uh, Marcus was our son Tor's best friend. God, we um, uh, speak Marcus's name for his story, for his death anniversary to land as Vicki is here talking about mental health and where we go and what that means and these sacred stories that each of us hold. So many prayers each and every week for this. May we be a community that can speak and be real and help each other and guide our way God, um, wash away the stigma. Um, remind us that therapy and care for our minds and our emotions is just as needed as our body. For all the people who are called to care in the moment of crisis, uh, the preventative path for the dailiness of what it means to have someone understand. And God, help us understand as well, each and every one of us. And so, Karen, we join with your family in remembering Marcus's life, and may his story continue to have impact and live on. God, in your mercy. Jolyn, that we continue to remember and pray for the people of Ukraine and safety and survival for the world in the midst of the dangers we face indeed. Um, God, prayers of peace, which is a word um, that has such deep meaning biblically for completeness, for wholeness, for all people, for, ha for us to have what we need. Uh, we pray for that kind of peace, God, but you are calling us in the midst to remember, to be a part in solidarity of those who are suffering. And so for each and every one of us and for the world to remember and be a part of that ongoing healing uh, to speak of evil in the world and how power is abused for others. Uh, God, help us with voice. Lead the way, God, in your mercy. I also want to name, again, um, gun violence in Buffalo, New York, uh, racial violence, um, the strife that we continue to face uh, for people of color and for all of us. Um, Again and again, we are being called in this world. How that works out, I don't know. Uh, but for the families and communities that are deeply suffering right now in Buffalo, New York, God, we pray for your love, for your healing peace. God, in your mercy. And also a prayer of gratitude, um, baby Stella Jordan. Uh, Stella was born uh, prematurely and has left at Children's Hospital and is now home. Um, Stella's grandma and grandpa are Chris and Tom Poe, a mom and dad, um, uh, Raymond um, and Amy, and Stella joins her three brothers at home and for her ongoing growing and healing, we pray. God, in your mercy. And I'd also uh, like to pray for the transgender community, uh, specifically a prayer, uh, Connor Strawman, a Mount Olivet kid and a member of our staff, um, praying for Connor as he identifies as transgender and is now known as Kira Strauman with the pronouns of she and her. 
Kira, we want you to know that we know and celebrate your call in the world and wanted to speak this as a community uh, so we can name Kira as her name now and accompany her. But there's so many stories of kids and others feeling trapped, not being accepted for who they are, uh, for legislation, for families and kids not to be able to be their full selves, and for this gospel that comes to us today, that the Holy Spirit is working, and for us to honor stories and listen and trust. And so, Kira, for all the ways that you're leading us in those places here at Mount Olivet to speak and name, may you feel that love today. We feel that love for you, God, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, your grace, and your love. And Vicki, um, ongoing prayers for Mental Health Connect, the work that you're doing and for our partnership ongoing. We give thanks so much for you and your leadership and also uh, for the work that you are about. Amen. Just a few announcements this morning. Thank you again, to, uh, Vicki Elliott, for your testimony, for your sharing. Um, Vicki will be available between services um, out in the Welcome Center for more information. Um, we have a Habitat build coming up soon. There are still spots, um, June 2nd and 3rd in Moundsview. Um, so there's a way to sign up. Um, or if you need help with that, come talk to me or Terry Knutson. Um, and then lastly, Confirmation Sunday is next Sunday at 1045. So with that, uh, let us stand for our sending hymn. <laughs> Receive this blessing. May the loving power of God, which raised Jesus from the dead, strengthen you with the Spirit and bless you now and forever. Go in peace. Tell what God has done.
Thanks be to God.